This is an extremely interesting system requirements chart because it has things like 64 gigabytes of RAM uh, for the ideal spec and even the recommended at 32. We also have some serious internet bandwidth requirements. What's going on with this? Well, we're talking about Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024, meaning this is a flight simulator, not just a standard video game which means like the type of things it might ask your computer to do could be very different than what a standard video game does. I'm also interested in how this stacked up against the previous game's system requirements. So uh, let's look at things like the 64 gigabyte RAM for the ideal spec recommended at 32, min spec at 16. First, let's be clear, we're not talking about VRAM. We don't have GPUs with 64 gigabytes VRAM. This is RAM, system memory, not uh, not VRAM. However, I think most gaming PCs these days are hitting 32, not 64. So uh, recommended spec, but not necessarily ideal spec for this game. Also, if we compare it to the previous game, uh, kind of a white background here, so flashbang warning. Anyway, uh, I, I pulled up the system requirements chart for the previous game, and I'm seeing that the system RAM was eight for the min spec, 16 for recommended, and 32 for ideal indicating that the RAM requirements for this game have doubled across the board for min, recommended, and ideal compared to the previous version of the game. Also, unlike most games, this system requirements chart lists internet bandwidth speed requirements, min spec being at least 10 megabit per second internet, uh, but then recommended going up to 50 megabit per second internet and ideal spec being 100 megabit per second internet. Now, some of you that live in certain areas, you're like, okay, that's nothing. I have, you know, a gigabit up and down. It's no big, no big deal. But in other places, uh, you might not have quite those internet speeds so easily accessible. And also, how does that stack up against the previous game? Uh, if we pull up the previous game, it also had internet bandwidth requirements, uh, but they were five megabits per second for the minimum spec, and the recommended spec was only 20 megabits per second. And then the ideal spec was listed as 50 megabits per second. If we pop back over to the uh, new game, uh, which by the way, I don't think I mentioned it yet, comes out on November 19th. Uh, so uh, anyway, uh, the internet bandwidth requirements here, the min spec 10. So it's doubled the min spec internet uh, bandwidth requirement. The 50 megabits per second that used to be the ideal spec in the previous game is now the recommended. The previous recommended was 20 and the uh, new ideal spec is 100 megabit per second internet. So this is indicating that the game will be streaming in a ton more stuff uh, from the cloud as you're playing, which I think is also indicated by the storage requirements. So uh, the game, it's listing 50 gigabytes. Now it doesn't state that it uh, has to be an SSD, whereas a lot of games do specify SSD or HDD. So just says 50 gigabytes. Obviously these days an SSD would be better than not. This isn't specifying though one way or the other. Uh, but 50 gigabytes across the board. Now the previous game, interestingly, has triple the storage space requirement. Uh, where we're uh, looking at 150 gigabyte storage space requirement with the ideal spec listing in SSD. So uh, that's really interesting because that means that uh, this version of the game is has uh, a lot of a higher internet speed requirement and much larger RAM requirement and much lo lo lower storage requirement indicating again that I think they're gonna be much more reliant on streaming data off the cloud and then uh, you know caching that uh, for your use locally as you're playing, which means the install size can be smaller, but you're gonna have to be streaming in a bunch of information off the internet versus the previous game. I actually searched to see if there was any comment on this and I did find a WCCF Tech article about these system requirements that has a quote from the developer uh, where they mention the very important thing is overall bandwidth consumption is weighed down because you only download what you really see when you see it. And we don't pre-download at hundreds of gigabytes. Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, so the previous version of the game, already had over two petabytes of data on the cloud. That was the whole world data. Uh, we kept adding to that, but we still had planes, airports, meshes, points of interest, like castles and textures that were installed. That's the part that kept growing with the marketplace content, which had grown to two terabytes. So they had two terabytes of, uh, terabytes of marketplace content. Uh, now we integrate 
uh, now we integrated everything into the cloud for this version of the game. Uh, and it is all streamed and kept into a rolling cache on the hardware. You don't have to install any new world updates. They're just streamed seamlessly. Okay, so that is confirming uh, kind of what I was seeing there in the specs, which is it's much more reliant on streaming seamlessly, which means you don't need world updates. Uh, it's kept in a rolling cache. But again, notice those, uh, those larger internet uh, bandwidth uh, requirements and, and larger uh, RAM space, things like that. So something to keep in mind. Anyway, as we then dive into more of the uh, more traditional system requirements, talking about GPUs and CPUs, Another thing I'm noticing here, especially for the ideal spec, they want some big CPUs with a lot of cores. And even the recommended spec um, is def uh, definitely recommending more cores than the, uh, than the min spec. And the min spec is, you know, not super mind blowing, but not, not a complete slouch. So, so what are we looking at on the CPUs? Because again, as a simulator game, uh, I remember the previous Microsoft Flight Simulator, it can be very, very heavy on the CPU for the types of simulations that you're running. Uh, so the min-spec CPUs are a Ryzen 5 2600X, which is a six core 12 thread processor uh, from, it looks like uh, April of 2018. So not asking like a crazy amount. Uh, and then the uh, Intel uh, equivalent being, well, not equivalent CPU, but the other, the Intel uh, well, min-spec CPU they listed was the i7-6800K, which is also six cores and 12 threads. And uh, this one coming from 2016. Notice that both CPUs are at least six core 12 thread. I have a feeling that if you try to run this game uh, on, a, on a CPU uh, with, with significantly fewer cores, uh, you might have some serious problems. Now, uh, if we go up to the recommended spec, notice that the uh, AMD CPU stays at the same generation and just goes from the 2600X to the 2700X. Uh, the 2700X moves to eight core 16 thread and would I think have a little bit of a clock speed advantage, but the main difference uh, is um, that you're adding in those additional cores and threads. So indicating that this game probably likes cores and threads. The uh, Intel CPU spec has a much larger jump going from the 6800K to the 10700K. Uh, the 10700K, if I pull that up, is also an eight core 16 thread processor now. Uh, so again, it's looking like the recommended spec is an eight core 16 thread CPU. Um, a lot of games are more single threaded and you can get by as long as you have, you know, fast performance on, on, a, on a few threads. This looks like it more, it's much more uh, core heavy. And we see that again uh, as we move up, to, move up to the ideal spec listing a Ryzen 7 7900X or an Intel i7-14700K. So these are our, our massive CPUs. The, the 7900X is a 12 core 24 thread CPU from just a couple of years ago in 2022. So this is uh, very powerful and this is still uh, pretty similar to the performance of the newer 9900X, uh, which in most gaming workloads is similar, although you know certain workloads uh, does have an advantage. Uh, the Intel uh, 14700K is a 20 core 28 thread processor, although keep in mind that those aren't all performance cores. A bunch of those are efficiency cores um, so it's 8P cores and 12E cores. Anyway, the point is, they're certainly indicating that the game could be very CPU heavy like its predecessor, which I don't think would be any sort of surprise. Now, when we get to the GPUs, I think things just get a little bit weird, okay? So for example, the AMD GPU here, the RX 5700, is just in a completely different class of performance than the GTX 970. Now, I've noticed in some system requirements charts, um, the, because some uh, older AMD GPUs, uh, I think no longer have official driver support, they don't list older, uh, older GPUs that are no longer getting um, current driver updates. So I'm curious if that explains the massive discrepancy in uh, GPU performance between these min-spec GPUs. Uh, because if I pull up Tech Power Up's relative performance chart, uh, a Ryzen 7 5700 is just in a completely different class. I've got to scroll way, way back to find that, that GTX 970. 
uh, which is reaching only 56% of the performance of that RX 5700. Uh, now that means that you're probably actually okay, uh, at least to boot the game, uh, on some of the GPUs in between here. the nine. So, so if you don't have one of these two GPUs, how do you tell where your GPU falls in? Well, look at this relative performance chart. Is yours falling somewhere in this range between these two GPUs? And like I said, I'm, I'm fairly suspicious that they are um, uh, choosing this based on maybe, like I said, current driver support or something like that. Another thing that indicates that could be the case uh, is when we look at the step up to the recommended specs. The AMD GPU just moves from the 5700 to the 5700 XT, which while that is a step up, it's not like a crazy step up. We're, uh, if we set the 5700 as the baseline here, uh, then the 5700 uh, XT version, do we, is it popping up on the, is, yeah, is about 9% faster according to tech power up. And while those exact results may differ, it's not like a, uh, a massive world of difference between those two GPUs. Whereas if we set the 970 as the baseline, if we go way back to the 970 and set that as a baseline, and then we look at the jump uh, from the 970 to the recommended NVIDIA GPU of the 2080, we'll notice that there's a massive jump in performance going from the min spec to the recommended spec. So again, if we start out at the 970 and we, uh, and, and we scroll down, uh, getting all the way to a 2080 um, pushes us to a, uh, let's see, a two, uh, well, 2.39 times the, the GPU performance. That also puts us into a similar ballpark of like an RTX 4060, an RX 7600, uh, RX 6650 XT, um, uh, 2070 Super is not too crazy far behind. Uh, so if you're somewhere in that ballpark, like a 3060 Ti would be even more powerful. Uh, then you're around the recommended spec. So again, it feels like something's weird here uh, with the AMD min spec being too high. Um, but like I said, maybe that's explained by driver support or something like that. Uh, now, if we go ahead and look at the ideal spec, once again, we're jumping quite a bit to a 7900 XT or an RTX 4080. Uh, if we're going from a, maybe a, let's set the uh, 2080 as a baseline. So if we set the 2080 as the baseline, and now we wanna go up to a 4080, so we're jumping two gens of 80 class GPU. Again, you might find your GPU somewhere in between here, um, but as we scroll down all the way down to a 4080, one of the most powerful GPUs available, that's another 2.4 times performance increase, so a massive increase in performance. Uh, but that being said, they're not really telling us, uh, unlike a lot of the newer system requirements charts, what type of resolution frame rate and graphic settings that we're targeting here. Also, I know that in the previous uh, version of Microsoft Flight Sim, a lot of times it was CPU bottlenecked. So while uh, putting in a big GPU into this uh, could make you run at higher resolutions, uh, as far as your frame rate goes, if this game still ends up being very CPU limited, then no matter how powerful your GPU is, uh, you won't be able to push high frame rate experiences. So that's something to keep in mind. Now they pair up the 7900 XT with the RTX 4080. And I will mention that if we set the 4080 as the baseline, that generally the 7900 XT uh, isn't quite as powerful. Usually the closer match would be the 7900 XTX from AMD. Now whether that's indicating a difference in optimization or just either one of these would be fine, uh, you know, they're not giving a specific performance class recommendation anyway. Uh, also, if we look at the, uh, the, the recommended spec rather than the ideal spec, again, it was a 5700 XT uh, being paired with the, the 2080. That was also a weird pairing, because if we set the 5700 XT as the baseline, uh, then the 2080 non-super is generally more powerful, and there would have been closer AMD GPUs that they could have put uh, on that pairing. So basically, my thoughts on the GPU pairings here are, they're all weird, although the, the most crazy difference is the 5700 and the 970. Like I said, maybe that's a driver spec. If you're looking at how does this compare to the previous game, uh, we could take a look at that right here. So the previous game uh, for, for GPU specs was uh, a minimum GPU of an RX 570, 
I guess another possible uh, uh, explanation for the RX 5700 in the current version could be they added an extra zero and they met, meant an RX 570. That's a possible explanation. <laughs> um, anyway, <laughs> uh, but uh, either way, a, a 5700 or possibly 570 and, and a 970 either way is more powerful than what was the previous minimum spec was in the previous game. Uh, which was an RX 570 or a GTX 770. Um, the previous recommended GPUs were a 970 and a 590. So the previous recommended GPU has now moved down to the min spec. And the, um, uh, the previous ideal spec GPUs were a Radeon 7 or an RTX 2080. So the uh, RTX 2080 used to be the ideal spec GPU and now they're listing that as the uh, recommended. So everything kind of maybe shifted down a notch as far as those targets go. You'll also know that the CPU specs have moved up as well, where the previous gen, uh, uh, previous game uh, was saying you could get by on a Ryzen 3 1200, uh, whereas now we're asking for the Ryzen, uh, Ryzen 5 2600. So moving up a generation, moving up more cores. So in general, it is looking like the 2024 version of the game is going to be more taxing on your hardware for everything except for uh, it looks like the storage space, and including especially the RAM and your internet bandwidth. So uh, hopefully you guys found this uh, useful and or interesting. I wish it gave us specific resolution and frame rate targets, uh, but it doesn't. So we're, we're going to go, uh, uh, you know, that's the best info that we can get. Uh, if you guys support, uh, want to support what I do here on the channel, consider hitting the join button down below. And a huge thank you to everybody who has. You can look at the member benefits when you click the join button and uh, see if that's right for you. I hope all of you have an excellent day.